Welcome back to The Forge, guys. Thank you for joining us again today. So today's lesson is how to forge flat bit tongs. So in today's lesson, obviously, we're going to be forging a pair of flat bit tongs. For, to do that, I'm going to start with 200 mil of 16 mil square bar. Uh, we're going to do a series of set downs, drawing it out into different sections. Uh, and I've showed you how to do this in previous videos. Um, it's a really important skill for a blacksmith, being able to make your own tools is one of the luxuries of the job. I don't have to rush out and uh, go and buy something. I can literally go get a bit of steel off the rack or out of the scrap bin and turn that into a useful tool for me. So let's mark this up, get it hot and start on making these tongs. Okay, so rather than marking up my steel bar, what I'm actually going to do is mark my anvil. And I'm going to put one mark at 35 mil from the edge. And that's where I'm going to do my first set down. So I'm going to bring my bit of stock out of the fire bring it up to my mark, drop it down to 45 degrees, come in with a hammer and uh, then forge that out and that's going to be the nibs on my tongs. Okay, so warmed up, there's one. All right, that's both bits in the fire at once. Let's be efficient here. Okay, uh, so today I'm going to be forging on uh, the coal fire uh, or in our case, coke forge. Um, it's important for me as a blacksmith to be able to control my heat. You know, one of the reasons I'm using this and not the gas forge is that I can get nice short uh, high intensity heat uh, using the coke forge and it's much better for um, a small batch production like making a pair of tongs. If I was going to make 10 or 20 pairs of tongs I'd definitely use the gas forge but then I wouldn't forge them out by hand either I'd use the power hammer. To improve the efficiency of using the coke forge I'm going to warm up two bars at once uh, which is another skill in its own right you know being able to control the fire and manage multiple pieces in there at the same time. Um, it takes a bit of practice it's not something you can do in uh, on your first attempt. Uh, in, the, in the good old days, your uh, apprentice would have warmed the steel up for you and then uh, kept an eye on stuff while you were forging uh, on the anvil. But uh, unfortunately, the, the days of the seven year apprenticeship are long, long since gone. Okay, let's get this bit of stock nice and hot. Out to my first mark on my anvil. Drop it down to 45. Aiming for that corner of that anvil. Don't come in too deep. So I'm deep enough there. What I'm gonna do now is Hit the same place, lift that up, and I've got plenty of heat left in my nib, so I'm just going to bring it back slightly, and then I'm going to force that out. There we are. Right, I'm not going to forge that back down to 16 mil, but I'm just going to refine it a little bit, and we're going to leave it oversized, because later on we're going to come back and we're going to touch up the nibs. And uh, tidy that all up. So that's the first nib on the first tong done. I'm going to sit that back in the fire and I'm going to do the second one. Now, you don't want to go too thin. I don't want them too wide either. These are only for flat bit tongs. Later on in later lessons, I'll show you guys how to make some of the different pairs of tongs. Things like rivet tongs, bow tongs, and all those other important ones that we use. There we go. So that's the first heat. Now on my second heat, what I need to do is put a mark at 45 degrees and I'm actually going to go to the far edge of the anvil and we're going to do a set down over there and that's going to separate the, the nib and start forging the hinge plate. Okay, so again, nice and hot. What I'm looking for is to get my first set down on the edge of the anvil. Hopefully I can do this without hitting the camera. So there we go. So on the reverse side, what is done is separated that material and that's left us with the uh, front edge for the tong nib. So when the two of these mate, when they go together, um, that 45 gives you a little bit more support on the nibs and it allows them to obviously close up nicely. Um, what I need to do next is to actually forge some of this down um, to about probably eight mil um, by 20 or so. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, rather than putting a mark on my anvil, is I'm just going to mark the tongs. And I want to do that 38 mil back from that first set down. It should be about there somewhere. That looks about right to me. Center punch nice and close to the edge. Like so, so we can see it when it's hot. Just mark the second one up at the same time. Uh, make sure they're all nice and even and I end up with two hinge plates that are the same. That's better. Right, so, put my 
I said punch mark there. I know it looks a lot thicker, but it's just not flat on the anvil. There we go. Good. Right, let's get it back in the forge, get it warmed up, do this third set down. So bring it out onto the anvil on the far edge. Find your center punch mark, so mine's there. Lift it up at 45 degrees. And bring the hammer down, aim it for that corner. Don't go too thin. So that's as thin as I want to go at the moment. What I'm going to do, I've still got some heat in it, so I'm going to force this down a little bit more. And it's starting to look a bit like a pair of tongs. There we are. Right, what I need to do now is I'm going to straighten this up, but I'm then going to find a pair of tongs that are going to hold on to the nib so I can spin this round in the forge, um, holding this end, and I can start drawing out these tong reins. Okay, so I've forged the, the nib area of both of these reins. Uh, what I've done now is spun them around the fire, I've got them warmed up. I'm actually going to change to a slightly heavier hammer. So I was using my two pound hammer. I'm going to change it up, this is about two and a half. Um, I prefer to use this one for drawing out. And I'm probably going to draw these out for the most part on the bit. So I need to get them up to a nice bright yellow, almost a white heat. And then uh, we'll start drawing these tong rings out. Okay, nice and warm on that bit. Find that on the flat of the anvil. Whew, and I'm warming up. There we go. So that's first heat. We're going to take a few more. And I'm working two of these at once, so I need to do the other one next. making me do this by hand. I've got a power hammer behind you. Now, if you try doing this at a red heat, you will not get anywhere. But a uh, nice bright yellow to a white heat. Just before your welding heat is what we're after for obviously drawing these out. It's the quickest way of doing it. Now, you don't need a power hammer for these. They're not complicated. It's a bit of work, but hard work's what we signed up for. Right, so let's draw this out a bit more. I'm going to flat the anvil this time. Dig that toe of the hammer in. And draw the reins out. These reins need to be probably about 12 inches long, and then they need to be far enough away so that you don't burn your fingers when you're using them in the forge. Now we're aiming for a rectangular section with these uh, tong reins. Um, and I'm doing a pass, digging the, the toe of the hammer in, and then I'm running back over it with the flat of the hammer to take those marks out. Just to make sure that I'm not creating any undercuts, um, creating any areas where the uh, piece of steel was really hollow, uh, because I don't want to forge in a big deep crescent that I can't get out later on. Um, so take your time, don't rush them. Obviously it's much easier if you do it with a power hammer, but we're gonna do it the old fashioned way today. Uh, so currently I've drawn my tongs out, if I get my rule the right way around. Um, 10 inches, 250 mil. What I'm looking for is about 300 mil or 12 inches. So I've got a little bit more meat in this that I want to draw out. Um, so I'm going to take another couple of heats and uh, stretch these reins a little bit longer. Okay, so that's 300 mil. That's the, the target. Okay, I think we are. Whoop, I'm on the wrong set down. There we go. Yep, we're out to length there. We're at 300 mil from that set down. Pretty happy with that. The section's nice and clean. Corners are a bit too sharp though. So what I'm gonna do next is turn the bar slightly and take some of these corners off and dress those edges in. There's nothing worse than having sharp square corners in your fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this through not quite 45 degrees, maybe about 30 degrees. And start dressing in those corners. I'm not gonna do the whole bar in one heat. Just down a little way. The other thing you don't wanna be doing is forging in a twist. The bottom as well. The bottom is not so important because your fingers don't come into contact with that piece. Right, that's the top end done. Now to do the bottom half. So back into the board. Get them nice and straight. 
and I can leave this on the side of the fire to cool down. So that's that the rain drawn out. I'm going to stick this on the side, as I said. I'm going to let this cool down, uh, and I'm going to forge the other one and make sure it's all exactly the same size and length and everything else. Okay, so after about 45 minutes or so of forging, drawing out tong reins, make sure they're all the finished length. Um, I've got two tong reins now that are the same size, same length and uh, the tong reins themselves are actually finished. So I'm gonna quench these off, I'm gonna spin them around, I'll be able to hold on to them with my hands then, and we're gonna refine those hinge plates and sort out those nibs. Okay, so I need to come in here, 45 degrees or thereabouts, and we're compressing that hinge plate. Knocking it back into itself. It's gonna bend a little, but we can always straighten it out. If your reins are getting too hot, because obviously we're not using tongs, just cool them down. And cool your hand down at the same time, and that can go back in the fire, and we'll do it again. Now I'm just using the last of the heat, just to straighten everything up. Tidy it all up. I'll make sure everything stays straight, true and straight. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to do the other one the same, so I'm going to put this to one side. And we'll do the other nib. Same again. And the other one, they want to be exactly the same. So as I warm up my hinge plate, obviously that heat's creeping down my tong rein, and that's causing it to bend. So I just want to take my jug and just cool off the rear of that rein behind that hinge plate. That just gives me a little bit more control. There we go. So there's the two hinge plates forged. They sit together nicely. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a uh, cross into the jaws so I can hold on to uh, round stock and small bars. I'm going to take a bit of six mil round and I'm just going to hammer that across the jaw that way. And then I'm going to put it in the center and hammer it up the length. And it. Good. So we end up with a nice little cross, hammered into that nib, and uh, I'm going to do the other one the same now. Okay, on the second one, I'm not going to do the cross, I'm just going to do one in the centre. So the next stage in this, uh, because we've got our blank forged, is to actually punch and drift the hole ready for a rivet. Now there's no shame at all if you haven't got all the tools you need to do this, and just drilling a hole through the centre for the same size as your rivets. But I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, uh, especially as my bar is still hot. So what I'm going to do is place it on the anvil at 45 degrees when it's warm, bring in my punch, line it up in the centre, go in through from one side, I can then flip it over, I can spot the shadow on the back, and I can then punch that out, and then we'll warm it up again, drive the 10 mil drift through, and that'll be the right size then for riveting up. I'm gonna cool off your punch. Now I can spot my shadow on the back. And I can go in from the back. One more over the pritchel. One again. There we go, so that's that out. There we go. And we end up with a nice punched hole in the center of our hinge plate. Um, I'm gonna drift this out now. That becomes a little bit more fiddly. So I'm gonna use bolster plate for drifting that to size. Now my bolster plate, the hole, will that line up? Yeah, I can get that from both sides. So I'm gonna stick that over my hardy, get another heat on there, and we'll drift that to size. Uh, so I'm not gonna use my normal forging hammer. What I'm gonna use instead is my three pound turning hammer, which has actually got a cracked face already from drifting holes. So uh, it won't matter if this bit of stainless puts a dent in the front of this face. Drift in the hole. And 
There you go, 10 mil all. Let's flatten that off. After flattening it, what I'm actually going to do is drift it from the other side as well. So just... Don't pick drift up with your fingers, because they are. You can drop that in there. Right, there we go. That's all nicely drifted. I need to make sure my hinge plate is nice and flat. So I'm just going to take one heat. I'm going to stick it flat on my anvil, find a nice flat spot, and uh, just flatten that off a little bit. Okay, so let's flatten that off. Now, my apprentice, Kristen, asked why am I drifting it from both sides? And that just helps to refine that hole, because obviously you get some drag um, when you drive a drift through a piece of stock. And so you tend to end up, if you're not careful, with an hourglass shaped hole. So by just flipping it over and then drifting it from the other side, you sort of correct that and end up with a much more parallel hole uh, through your piece of stock. Um, but there we are, there's that finished nib. Now I've got to punch and drift the other one. Uh, we'll do that a bit quicker for you. And then uh, these are ready for riveting up then. Nice, one last thing to do on this pair of tongs. Okay, so we've got our two tong blanks uh, ready to go. These are ready for riveting up now. So for riveting, I need a, a 10 mil rivet. I might do a, a video at some stage on, on how to forge these, but not now. Um, 10 mil rivet snap, so I hold the rivet, give me a nice top and then a bottom snap as well, because we're going to rivet this up on the anvil. Uh, so I'm going to put that down there, chuck this through the back of these, give it a gentle tap. We need to trim it down first. So the rule of thumb with rivets is if you're doing them cold, you need one and a half times the diameter in length. Uh, and if you're doing them hot, you need, roughly speaking, about twice uh, the diameter. So in theory, I need about 20 mil of rivet sticking through after these have been riveted up. Oh, they look like tongs. Right, so. About that much. So let's trim that down. Okay, so my rivet's trimmed to size. Now, I could uh, warm a rivet up in the coke forge, but I'm probably going to end up losing it in the coals. I've got the oxyacetylene there next to me, so I'm going to use that. Also makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to rest that on my bottom snap. Um, I've got a monkey tool if I need it. So you can use a monkey if you've got a bit of a discrepancy, just to set everything nice and tightly together. And then come in with a rivet snap then, and you can come on top. Now, um, probably on the first heat, what I'm actually going to do is just come straight in with a hammer and mushroom that up a little bit, and then bring the snap on top. You don't want to bring the snap in too early because you just end up bending the shank of that rivet. Okay. So I've started my rivet off. I've mushroomed up nicely. And I'm going to do this in one go. Okay, there we go guys, there's the uh, tongs all nice and riveted together. Now what typically happens is that they lock completely and that's not a problem. So what I want to do now is bury them in the coals on the forge, uh, get them nicely hot and then we'll be able to work them loose and also straighten up the ends and get all the nibs and everything pointing in the right direction and uh, also set these for my hands. So I need to line my tongs up a little bit better. So just give it a gentle tap, persuade them. And keep looking down because you want them to be dead center. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Right, the next thing is to set the width because you don't want your tongs fully closed when you're trying to forge bits and pieces. So what I actually want to do is put something in the back here and then I can adjust these jaws. I can just close my jaws and bring them together a little bit more. 
So that's a nice comfortable grip. There's my tongs, they're all fully functioning. I've got my cross hammered into my jaws. I've only done it on one side. I don't need to do it on the other. It's giving me a nice tight grip. Uh, the comfortable in position. An important thing with tongs is that you're not straining. You don't want those nibs together with your hands so far apart that you're struggling to hold on to them. You end up with a lot of fatigue in your hands. Equally, they don't want to be fully closed um, because if you slip, drop the piece, you'll end up biting your hand between the reins, which is never pleasant. Okay, so to keep these uh, tongs moving nice and freely, we're going to quench them off and keep them moving. And quench off the back as well because they're a bit on the warm side. Oh, now they're starting to bite as they cool down. There we go, now they're nice and free. Right, there we go. One nice pair of flat bit tongs. We'll give them a wire brush and uh, we'll test them out. So there we are guys, there's the finished pair of tongs. I'm pretty chuffed with the way they've come out. They work beautifully. They hold my six mil round, which is what I've set them for. And uh, that'll help me forge things like nails, uh, different types of hooks and stuff like that. And we'll be using these in some of our upcoming classes as well. Now remember you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, support us on Patreon. Um, remember to click like and subscribe and we'll see you here next time on the channel. Cheers guys.